Chief, how are you? Worrying as usual. And you? Same as you, only more so. Impossible. I'm the A1 warrior in this state. Well, then explain to me why all the mystery about this new assignment you've measured me for. Why couldn't you tell me over the phone? Let's talk over there. Sit down, huh? Well, Chief, what is it this time? Bank robbery, counterfeiting, murder? It's furs, Don. Furs? Yes. The raising of domestic fur-bearing animals has become a big industry, especially in this state. Yes, I've heard of several farms upstate where they're raising pelts for the market. But when a business grows big enough, then the racketeers move in on it. And that's what's happened to the fox breeders. Their losses have been tremendous in the past few months. You mean pelts stolen in shipment or from the warehouses? No, they're stealing live foxes right off the farms. And despite having their places watched and men staked out night and day, no one has seen any track or sign of the thieves. Well, there must be a clue of some kind. There must be, but there isn't. I've had some of the best men on the force working on the case without getting anywhere. It's one of two things. Either there's a leak in our department or those crooks are the cleverest gang I've ever come across. The thieves keep right on operating? Yes, and they're stealing the most valuable animals the farms produce. The losses are running to thousands of dollars. Unless we can put a stop to it, it'll practically ruin this great industry. Well, where do I come in? You're coming in as a one-man show, and you'll start from scratch. These are your instructions. Don't read them until you get to the address on the envelope. After you've memorized them, destroy the papers. I've written what I want you to do in longhand. Be no typewritten copy or any stenographer to get wise to it. Follow my instructions to the letter and let me know results as they happen. Thanks, Chief. I'll do my best. I know you will, Don. Good luck. out of that number two cage. That's one of our new crossbreeds, the black and platina. Pretty valuable, I suppose. Yes, and once we breed the true platina, each animal will run into thousands of dollars. You've obviously put in a lot of hard work and plenty of money building up such a nice place. I hope I can be of some service in solving your problem. If you do, you'll surely have the gratitude of every fox breeder in the country. There's one thing bothers all of us. How these thieves operate. How they can catch a fox and carry it off and still never leave any trace. And you've never seen any suspicious prowlers around? No breaks in your fences? Nothing? Not a thing. No footprints anywhere near the fences. And our fences are tight. No breaks. No broken locks on our cages. We have watchmen day and night. Just recently, we've installed a series of lookout towers. Well, it certainly is a mystery. Oh, we've had plenty of complaints from other fox farms. They all tell me the same thing. No clues of any kind. Just seems as if the foxes took wings.
What are we stopping here for? I want to show you why we're quitting this neck of the woods. Nothing will convince me we ought to quit. We've got a lot of first-class pelts out of here, and we'll get plenty more. Just as easy. I still think it's a great spot for us to keep on working. I'm going to show you something that'll change your mind and make you quit beefing. All right, all right. You see that? Look out, Tar. When did they put that up? Well, I got them all around the place. You win, Brad. Those towers certainly put a crimp in our business. I hope none of the other fox farms install them. One peep from up there, they'd get wise to our little scheme. It's a good thing I spotted those towers in time. You're right. It's kind of green in this business, Pete. But after you've been in it as long as I have, you'll find there's always something new coming up. Well, for the short time I've been with you, you certainly taught me plenty. We better get back to the car. Something's wrong. All right, up with them. What are you fellas doing around here? Oh, nothing. Just looking around. I suppose you went blind looking, so you can't read that no trespassing sign there. No, but... Those signs generally don't mean much, anyhow. Yeah, well, you'll find out that one does. What's in those bottles in there? Just some old clothes. Open that door and let me see. Open them up. Just as I thought. All right, you fellas, get in there. We'll let Mr. Curtis take a look at these buns. Come on, get in. We followed in the direction the thieves had gone. About ten miles down the road, we found their car abandoned. It had phony license plates, and there was nothing we could use for identification. Did the guard give you a good description of the men? Oh, he was so excited and confused, his description was worthless. Tough luck, all right. Well, what do you plan to do now? I'm going to check every fur store in town for stolen pelts. See if I can find any that came from the Curtis Fox farm. That's the spirit, Don. And I suppose you want another operator to help you in your rounds with the fur store. Well, I... Could use a girl with a good knowledge of fur values. I'll phone the office in town. They can give you all the help you want. That'll be fine. So long, Chief. So long, Don. Oh, it is lovely. It looks stunning on you. But I'm afraid it's just a little more than I can afford. Well, I can have one made up for you. Now, this is a cheaper fur. 
The white tips are artificially sewn in like the hair on a wig. The silver tips are really badge of fur. Of course, it'll only wear half as long as the genuine, and anyone with a slight knowledge of furs will be able to tell it from the genuine. Yes, I guess they could. But tell me, what makes the real fur so terribly expensive? Well, in the first place, it's a very rare fur. And before they raised silver foxes on farms, they used to cost three times as much. Even now, with the pelts coming from farms, they're very uneven, and 50% of them are sold a second. Now you see where the expense comes in. Yes. If you really want that garment, I can let you have it for half what I originally quoted. Half? Oh, I can't resist it. I'll take it. I'm sure that you'll never regret your choice. Shall I send it? Wear it. There, is that correct? Yes, thank you. I hope to see you again. Good day. get these out, and I don't care. But as long as you keep bringing in fast goods like these, I'll buy. Well, there's plenty more where these came from. All right, Brad. I'll get you your money. I suppose we'll beat it back to the woods. Yeah, Pete, but not the same place. I see you came back with the jacket. Yes. After trying almost every store in town, I think we found it. What did he charge you? Why, less than half the price the green pelt would have cost. Now, we're going up to a little place called Green Valley. You stay here. Brad. Thanks, Lewis. We've been staying here in three or four weeks. So the next time we'll have to hike the price for no sale. Ah, uh, you boys must realize that these pouts you're selling me are hot. I take a chance every time I buy them. Yeah, I know. But you don't see any return address tagged on them, do you? Maybe not. But if I get caught handling them, I go to jail. Get them up, boys. You're all going to jail. between now and the time we get to headquarters. We'll take these along for evidence. On your way, Lewis. This place is too much in the open. <laughs> You're learning something every day. Well, get in the car. I'm going to show you where we're going to operate from. Well, here's... In 
back of that fence is where they keep the best foxes penned up in cages. Those you saw out in front were just the young ones, whose furs aren't ready for market yet. I get you. But the fence is too high. We'd take a plane or a blimp to get over it. Oh, you're wrong. I've been up against higher fences than that. Maybe you have, but I still say it's too high. Well, all right, we'll leave it to Queenie. Hey, Queenie! See that fence? Is it too high? <laughs> no, she says it's a cinch. Well, that settles it. The fence must be all right. Let's start the work right now. Oh, no. We'll take it easy for a while until the heat on the Curtis farm cools off. Right again, Brad. Whatever you say goes. Fine, Chief. <laughs> well, I suppose you've got some good news for me. Uh, I don't know whether you call it good or not. Uh, just as I expected. Lord is sticking to his story. So he doesn't know who the men were who sold him the felt. Well, that leaves us right back where we started. No, we're doing a little better than that. How so? Well, I've identified the pelts I confiscated from Lewis. They were stolen from the Curtis Fox farm. Well, how could you tell them? By a secret mark that Curtis puts on all his foxes. So that proves that the two men who got away from the watchman at the Curtis farm were the thieves who sold the pelts to Lewis. Well, that's something anyway. But how are you going to trace them? Well, I've got a hunch about this case, Chief, and I'm going to follow it through, if it's all right with you. What is it? According to our reports, every farm in the state has had losses excepting one. That's in Green Valley, near the border. And you think they might go up there next? That's my hunch. I want to be there when they are. Go ahead, Don. Sounds like a good idea. Want me to send anyone along to help you? No, I'm going to carry my own crew this time. What do you mean, your own crew? My dog, Rennie. Oh. <laughs> and his pal. Another dog? <laughs> no. Rennie's pal is my young nephew. He and the dog are inseparable. Uh, won't a boy and a dog kind of cramp your style? No, quite the contrary. They'll be my window dressing. I'm going to be strictly a summer visitor in Green Valley. I'll pretend I wouldn't know the difference between a fox and a jackrabbit. I see. In other words, I'm going to play dumb. Not even let the owners of the fox farms know that I'm connected with the law. Sounds like a very good idea. I wish you lots of luck. Thanks, Chief. I'll keep you posted. <laughs>
another fox gone. See anyone or anything suspicious? I saw nothing. As I came back with pen number four, there was a fox missing. Pen number four? Oh, Dad, that was one of our pedigree foxes. Well, nice girl, Queenie. <laughs> She's a good girl. Yes, she was a good girl. Yeah. Well, there's something about that dog that's better than any human being. She never comes back empty-handed. Well, you know one time she was out for over 12 hours without any grub. When she came back, she had her fox just the same. Yes, and another thing is she don't talk. <laughs> you better take this in the back room and skin it, Pete. Certainly glad you called on us, Mr. Brady. You know, you're our closest neighbor for miles around. I'd like to have you call often. You know, it gets kind of lonesome around here. <laughs> Oh, Carol. Carol, this is Mr. Brady and Buddy. How do you do? How long have you been up here? About two weeks. Would you like to look our place over? You bet I would. I've never seen a fox farm before. Here, in. Come here. Come here. Is he safe? I mean, will he run after a fox? Certainly not. Reddy wouldn't hurt any animal. No, Reddy wouldn't hurt anything. Why, I seen him play for an hour with a chipmunk or, or a bobcat. A bobcat. Well, anyhow, he looked like one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys. Come on. This is the white-faced fox. Yes, what are these? Oh, well, that's the platinum fox. They're the most valuable. Oh, they're beautiful. I'm afraid I'm going to have to separate these, though. They've been fighting too much lately. <laughs> In this cage, we have Sally Ann, our prize victim. She's the pet of the place and worth about $10,000. Hey, that's quite an investment. I suppose it pays you well, though. Oh, it does, if your foxes are healthy and you don't have them stolen. Stolen? You're not bothered that way, are you? Well, not until recently. About two weeks ago, we missed our first fox. Then another one every day or so. Well, do you have any idea who the thieves might be? Not the slightest. All our fences are in fine shape, and we have caretakers watching day and night. Well, what about wolves? Don't they go after foxes? They do, but no wolves have been seen around here for the past ten years. Let's not bother our neighbor with our trouble. Hey, Wren. Wren. Come here. Well, one thing sure, Wren will never steal your prize, Vixen. Well, buddy, I think we'd better get back to the cabin. You've seen enough foxes for one day. Come on, Wren. Well, I hope you'll return our call soon. Buddy and I get lonesome, too. You can expect us most any time. Thanks. The sooner the better. about foxes and foxies? Well, I had my reasons, buddy, but for the time being, just forget I asked them. What do you want? You want to go out and play? Well, come on. What if I want to leave 
is too much lately. Well, buddy, uh, dogs like a person. Sometimes he wants to be alone, do just what he likes. You know, not be bothered about other people. Kind of like playing hooky from school, huh? Yeah, something like that. What's the matter, Brad? You know, Pete, that dog should have been back here a long time ago. Maybe somebody caught her the fox farm. I don't know, but it certainly got me worried. We got back. Hmm. No fox, huh? Now that don't look so good. Well, something must be dead wrong. Maybe somebody got wise and scared her away.
you get that box? Here, give me that. Grant, give me that box. Well, hello, Carol. Come on in. Thanks, I will. Make yourself at home. You know, Carol, I've enjoyed this last two weeks with you folks more than any time in my life. Where's your dog? Oh, I don't know. Not playing with some of his animal friends, I suppose. Or uh, maybe a silver fox? Dr. Burglar had your fox farm to do that, wouldn't he? That's just what he did. I saw him jumping our fence with a dead fox in his mouth. Oh, but that's impossible. Well, just the same, I saw him do it. Besides, we lost no foxes until you came up here. But that's ridiculous, Carol. Reddy would never do a thing like that. Well, there's always a first time. Today, we lost our 14th fox. Well, but if it were true, which it can't be, what would he do with them? Where would he take them? Here's your answer. Well, I can't understand it. Well, you have the proof in front of your eyes. Well, I just can't believe you'd do a thing like that. Shame on you, Reddy. Shame. Reddy didn't do it. It was me. I killed that fox. You killed it? Yes, it picked up a rock and I threw it at it. I didn't mean to hit it. I just meant to scare it. I suppose that's what happened to the other 13 foxes. You threw rocks at them to scare them. I don't know about the other foxes, but Ray didn't kill that fox. It was me. Buddy, are you telling the truth, honest, cross your heart? No, sir. I lied. I did it to save Rennie. And Ren did kill the fox. I guess so. It was dead in his mouth when I found him. Well, buddy, I appreciate your trying to save Ren, but you should never tell a lie. No matter how white a lie is, it's still a lie. Yes, sir. So, you're a fox killer. Yeah, I couldn't believe it, Ren, but Buddy saw you and so did Carol. And when you brought the dead fox here, you convicted yourself. And I guess this changes everything for us. Well, you're no longer a friend of mine. Thing to happen. Carol, are you sure that was Brady's dog? Of course it was his dog. I saw the dog jumping the fence with our fox. And besides, the dog brought the fox to the lodge while I was there. Well, then there's only one thing to do. Yeah, shoot him on sight. I wouldn't do that. But, Clem, will you go tell Don Brady to keep his dog tied up from now on? Just let me let on that fox killer. That'll be the last of it. And I'll keep a sharp watch, so long as he or the dog are around. Yeah. Shame on you. You're a bad dog, digging around little foxes. You're nothing but a big bully. You shouldn't be mad at Rennie. He doesn't know any better. You don't understand, buddy. This thing that Ren has done has not only upset the plans for your vacation, but seriously interfered with some very important business I was taking care of. Now, you stay here and don't let Ren go outside. What are you going to do? Well, I can't tell you that. We just do as I say.
better keep him tied up. Somebody's going to kill him. window. Well, can't be helped now, buddy. Come on, you'd better go along with me. It wasn't Rin who tried to steal our foxes. It was a strange dog I tried to shoot, but Rin wouldn't let me. I know. I saw it. You saw Rin make the other dog drop the fox? Yes, and the fox was alive and ran away. But why try to kill the dog? Well, why not? That dog's a menace to our fox farm. He ought to be shot. Oh, you're wrong. No dog goes out to kill foxes just for the fun of it. He's got to be trained that way. That dog's naturally vicious. Not naturally vicious. A dog may do something he's taught by his owner. The dog thinks what he does is wrong, but still, he... Well, he does it just to please his master. Well, what do you intend to do? Well, I'll try to find the owner of the strange dog. Then I think we'll be at the bottom of all this fox stealing. Go on, Ren. Show us where your friend lives. You better ride my horse. I'll follow Ren on foot. Okay. Come on, Ren. Show us where they are. Here comes Cleaning. And she's empty-handed again. Yeah. Let me see. 
You know, Brad, it's almost a week since Queenie brought back a fox. I know. You get me kind of worried. Something must have gone wrong over that fox farm. Yeah. I guess they must have got wise to us stealing the foxes. No, no. She's too smart for that. Yeah? Well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. Beat it back to city, I guess. This place is getting too hot. Come on, Queenie. back to the ranger station. Get Captain Dwyer. I'll see that those men don't get away. Are you coming with the fur, Pete? Okay. Well, get my sweater out there, would it? Sure. Hey, Brad. There's a dog outside here. Looks like he's been following Queenie. Yeah, you're right. Hey, maybe somebody's trailing us. I better get that dog in here and lock him up before his master finds out. where you are.
Here's your little fur rockets all over. Good work, Don. Your hunch was right about these fox thieves. Yes, only they don't do the actual dirty work themselves. They've trained their dog to steal the foxes and bring them in. Oh, that's it. Come on, you two. Hey, you'd better use the car. I'll bring your horses down later. Right. Come on, Ruddy. And all the time I thought you were here on a vacation. Well, I think I'll start that vacation right now. Mm. 